Well, welcome everybody to Radio Pi. Today we're going to be talking about, really about the most uh, standard type of use of real-time data that we typically see. Somebody who went from uh, data everywhere in different formats, not able to compare like plants to like plants to a unified system throughout. It's a great story. We hear it all the time. And I think it's told very, very well by our guest today. Our guest is Berkin Feeden. He's a performance and process director at OYAX Cement. Hello, Berkin. Hello, Nick. Nice to be here. Thanks for your invitation. Thank you so much for coming. And also our co-host today is going to be Martin Provencher. He is the industry principal for mining metals and materials here at OSI Soft. Good morning, Martin. Hello, Nick, and thank you, Berkin, for uh, doing this Radio Pi with us. Okay. And if we can start, Berkin, if you can go ahead and just tell us about OYAC Cement and about your role. Thanks, Nick. Uh, maybe I can start with a short info about the cement industry and our position. Uh, Turkey is the leader in Europe and is among the top six countries in the world, and there are currently 55 integrated plants in the country. In such a strong market, OYAK Cement is the largest cement producer and market leader in Turkey, and we have a capacity of nearly 23 million tons of cement per year. There are seven integrated plants and three grinding plants in Turkey and sales operations across all the geographical uh, territories inside the Turkey. Additionally, uh, OYAK Cement is also one of the strongest players on the ready mix concrete uh, industry. We have also uh, operations in not only in Turkey, also operating operations in Portugal, Cape Verde and West Africa. Uh, and uh, just in general, we OYAK Cement Group has uh, nearly uh, 34 million tons of cement production capacity in three different continents. Uh, when I come to my job, it's, I'm performance process direct, performance and process director of OYAC Cement uh, and responsible for effectiveness and efficiency of industrial operations uh, on our group. Uh, I have been coordinating technical performance evaluation, benchmarking technical supports, uh, detecting improvements and supporting uh, investment progresses sustaining energy and technical costs, uh, operational efficiencies, R&D innovation and new technological adaptations. I have also an operational technologies team uh, and which works on the adaptation of digitalization trends uh, to our operations. Very good. Very interesting, Berkan. Uh, can you uh, describe some of the challenges that, that OYAC is, is actually facing in the cement industry these days? Yeah, the, the main challenge uh, in cement industry, it's generally, if I can say it, it's late about uh, our product because we are produ producing a few million tons of material only a single plant. And uh, these huge amounts uh, are processed on continuous states like crushing, thermal processing, cooling, grinding, packing and dispatching. Accordingly, accordingly cons uh, consumed sources are uh, also much higher than many industries. On the other hand, sales price of final product is around 5 to 10 cents per kg, uh, which is cheaper than a, a bottled water. Uh, it's not feasible, to, according to it's not feasible to transport it far distances because it becomes unfeasible due to cost effect of logistics. Uh, therefore, we, we just need to just be located in near to markets in like big cities or uh, access construction zones. And uh, also we need to be near to raw materials and quarries uh, and also some hubs like ports, railway and uh, stations. And uh, when we look on the operational side, in the inside the industry, uh, process equipments are also so big equipments due to that high, high volume of uh, just operations. And uh, we are consuming, uh, in each equipment consumes a few megawatts in each hour and just uh, like our kilns consuming up to 20, 20, uh, 25 tons of coal in a hour hourly basis and their maintenance repair repairments and replacements are also costly and uh, it's not easy to uh, it's not easy to just uh, these these uh, repairments and replacements uh, also cause additional losses uh, due to decrease uh, production and sales Equipment reliability is important for us, uh, not only, that, uh, only technically, but also uh, cost basis. 
And uh, when I looked, just the energy side is critical in cement industry and for all the producers, also for us. Nearly 65-70% of variable cost is electrical energy and heat energy. That means uh, if we could increase uh, our efficiency about 10%, it's near, it's equal to nearly 4 to 5% of in total cost, uh, saving on, saving of uh, 4 to 5% in total cost. Uh, it's It's a huge effect. And uh, our plants are controlled by automation systems, uh, nearly completely or to completely automation. Uh, and there are around 3,000 IOS coming from uh, field to the SCADA or DCS systems. And uh, just there are many sensors and uh, the, the, just the signals mainly based on second or sub-second basis, like temperature sensors, pressure sensors, flow meters, gas concentrations or motor uh, uh, powers and currents uh, are coming. And it's not easy to operate as an operator. It's just, you can sit in, a, just, we are working with three shifts in all day and the operators are uh, managing and controlling from central control rooms. And they're looking some screens with uh, each screen has some 100, 150 different values are changing in each each second. They are looking for their values and trying to optimize the process and to do their best. But uh, the problem is that it's not easy for a human being just checking all that values and just uh, combining them to create uh, to create the efficient process. They they just uh, select some specific ones, uh, the most critical ones, and try to control the process. But uh, just it's not so easy and effective. Uh, and also. Uh, one another challenge is also uh, keeping data and using it on analysis. Uh, DCS data systems are designed to control the plant and store the data in its database, but uh, it's just uh, it's it's not easy to keep it inside of it. It affects their performance, and accordingly, uh, just one, two, or at most three months data you can keep in it, and you lost all that valuable data. Uh, that's also another uh, just uh, problem, uh, and uh, just uh, it should be uh, solved just like that to control uh, and to increase the efficiency. One of the things that you did was about three or four years ago, you started a project to try to make better use of sensor-based data. Can you describe what the goals of the project were? Yep, uh, just uh, it's an industrial digitalization project. Uh, we named it as an OX Cement 4.0 at the beginning, but uh, it it's also goes like that. There are some phases in our project, uh, and uh, the, the, we defined the first and most important phase uh, as data collection with an effective and uh, universal solution. Because when we uh, the idea of that project, it comes from uh, just when I was in one of our plants. Uh, just we, we we tried to collect the data and to analyze it due to that uh, that lost data as I explained uh, due to our SCADA system it, it 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 had not been stored and we planned to just store that data effectively uh, then we we planned to just adapt it to all the plants to collect all the data from the all plants in Turkey and uh, just we, st uh, we we looked to options to just how how could we collect that data uh, effectively then uh, we just we selected decided to go with OSI OS soft pi system uh, the the main reason is that it's universal con connectivity and a strong af structure uh, okay, just if, uh, I, if yeah if i can if i can stop you there there was a process that you went through of putting the system in place You've been able to get very good adoption, and I'm just curious the secret to getting a lot of people to use the new system and, and get value from it. Can you describe what you did to put the system in place? Yeah, uh, just the, the, our main advantage is just we de decide the team, an internal team, and uh, it's around 20 people just from the plants, especially. At the beginning, there wasn't the uh, team or structure in the head office. Then I decided to do it. The firstly because I realized that uh, we need a specific people to just follow it, and uh, I just uh, we we just 
uh, created a team a department as operational technologies under uh, my, uh, my, my department. And uh, I transferred a guy from IT. And then the, all, the, all, all the other people uh, just selected from the plants. Uh, in each, we just spread uh, that we, uh, all, all the plants, we, we try to just select people from all plants, automation engineers, uh, mechanical engineers, chemical engineers, process engineers, and some, some chief department chiefs. And uh, and maintenance and technology. There is a one maintenance and technology manager, and uh, just the people uh, just attended to that group, and it helped us because by that way we we, we have a uh, we have a just uh, uh, a, 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 a team member of the project in each plant. They liked the idea, and uh, they then then uh, gave their effort because it's not their uh, it was not their uh, the first job. They have they have some electrical automation guy need to just uh, maintenance and do the sustainability the other issues about the automation and electrical issues but left time sometimes in the weekends in uh, just late evenings they just focused on that uh, product they tried something we learned quickly by the help of that one they liked the because as a it, it's a user friendly application and uh, people do not need to be an expert on it. It's not a code uh, or coding issue is required or other thing. It's exactly the, the just uh, uh, exact engineers on the field from cement industry can use it from different disciplines. It also helped us so much because not only the people from IT background or other thing. It's some some of the team members. Uh, didn't have any experience about that software or other thing, but they can use uh, the platform easily. Uh, that's also our advantage. And have you? Um, I guess you've you've started in, in integrating uh, condition-based uh, maintenance within the asset structure, asset framework structure. And have you integrated with SAP PM for your work orders? Because I know you're working with SAP as your ERP platform. Not yet, but we have been working on it. It just we because we just uh, changed our ERP system uh, at the beginning of last year. It's also that modules are also new one, but uh, we are trying to do some integrations. Uh, especially, I can say that now it's stoppage. We we are using Event Frame of Osisoft to collect that data and send it to SAP directly. Previously. Uh, at last year, it was people just manually inputting. That time, the unit stopped and that got in the operation. And they are recording that people manually in the plants. Now we are using event frame automatically. We got it uh, outside uh, to the uh, 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 own design platform. We just uh, define uh, the reasons of failure and other thing. Then push it to the SAP. And also we use that. We are planning to use that database and uh, next prescriptive maintenance issues to just uh, preventive maintenance designs. We are we are planning to uh, after collecting that data maybe six months later. Then also work orders can be uh, implemented. Uh, the failures can be defined and automatically we can send uh, link it to the work order part to the SAP. Since the mid of last year, we had it's also phase three of our project. It's uh, machine learning adaptation. We 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 did uh, several uh, pilot projects, and now we we we, we mainly focused on that point. We are using uh, Pi system to collect data to push a, uh, a platform, uh, machine learning platform, and we got some predictive values, and we use that uh, future value uh, adaptation of uh, Pi system and also Pi Vision. It helps us so much because the predicted value gives 10 minutes later, 15 minutes later, some uh, vibration value or some quality analysis. We could show it. Now uh, we, can, we, all, we are also using that uh, feature in it. And the next stage at the last phase, uh, we are planning to push that data to the uh, process control. That's the last phase. Can you describe those four phases again? Yeah, uh, there are four phases uh, in, in our uh, digitalization project. The phase one is just the, the main phase, is data collection and visualization. On uh, phase two, uh, it just uh, the reporting and uh, the uh, new generation BI tools will be used to report that data. On uh, phase three, uh, additional tools and machine learning adaptation. Those additional tools are based on the, that stoppage quality data. We, we just designed uh, 
sub tools like that it's by the help of uh, our people and uh, also some uh, consultancy from third parties and at the last phase the phase four uh, we will use all of them uh, to manage uh, our uh, uh, operations by the help of that collected data and predicted uh, predicted data and uh, just uh, it's it's based on just ml supported ml supported advanced process control but we, we got good results. It's really promising. It's also nice for us. And we can also, uh, my, my, our aim is also just uh, check their uh, uh, effectiveness and, uh, and uh, just, uh, just uh, the, the effect on the process on the Pi vision also. Because as I said, it's the future value. It's, it's a great uh, advantage for us. We can see it, what, what, what is predicted and what will happen. Now uh, we, are, we placed it to the automation rooms. Operators can see it for some pilot plants. They can see what will happen in the next five minutes, next, next 10 minutes. Now they are using manually. They, they just try to adapt it according to predicted value. Uh, but in later stage, in the phase four, uh, it will also be opti- uh, automized. Okay. So you've described uh, AF a lot. Can you give us just kind of a, a description of the AF structure that you've set up? Because, you know, AF is generally a tree structure. And sometimes people build a, simply a geographical structure with different physical units. Sometimes people will build multiple structures so that, uh, you know, for example, yield accountants or E&I technicians may have their own structure uh, E&I technicians maybe buy the different pieces of equipment. Anyway, w- what structures have you created in AF? And what kind of things are you doing with those structures? Yeah, we, we, we designed... Uh, it, 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 it was also our advantage. Since we, we had decided to go with OSISoft, uh, we, we had learned many things. We had discussed that issue with the people, uh, the OSISoft, the, the related people. And then we... we, we we had started to just design what what could be what could be the structure and, uh, and now it's it, it is we are using that one also it's plant basis at the beginning we just selected a complete plant with including every uh, every options in it uh, just uh, we selected a complete plant structure uh, and then uh, we define the units, subunits as a child element. And under that units, just also we, we give some specific details on it. Uh, okay, just so, like so, plants. so at, a, at, at the top level is all the individual plants, and that's geographical, correct? How, how many plants again did you say you had? Uh, there are 10 plants in Turkey now, and also okay. uh, uh, just three, three from uh, Portugal and uh, one plant from Ivory Coast. It's also added uh, last month. Okay. And, and now these, stru- the, these the structures that you created at the top for individual plants, were you able to reuse any of the plants? Like, were, were the plants similar enough that you were able to just use, say, one as a template and then create the others, or was it more complicated than that? Yeah, we we uh, we, we try to generate some t- uh, templates about that, like uh, some specific equipments, like cement mills or just uh, kilns, rotary kilns, to create the templates, and also at the uh, child elements we try to do it, like fan okay. drive. But, or other but the plant itself, the plants themselves are not similar enough that you could just copy from one plant to. You know, sometimes people are lucky enough that they're. Their physical structures are practically, they're, they're functionally equivalent, so they can just copy from one physical structure to another. But it's not, it's not like that in your situation. I imagine these are plants that are, that are not uh, for, similar enough that you can do that. Yeah, but for some specific equipments and uh, critical ones, uh, there are some similarities. We, and we, we, we are using templates for them, like uh, the main kiln fan is ID fan. It's named this in each cement, in each kiln should have one or two ID fans. And that it should be also just benchmarked and checked. And we use that. We, we can use a template for that one or some drives or some other things. There are some options and we are we are using that one also for them. You know, I forgot to ask when we were prepping for the interview. Did you are you making use of any of the notifications capabilities that that you can put in? You know, once you've got templates, you can also build notifications off of those with templates. Are you doing anything like that? Uh, 
if it just uh, just the visual and in the pie vision you're asking no no the uh, um there's there's ex yeah email notifications that type of thing yeah we are using uh, for rotary kilns it's cement rotary kilns in cement industry is critical units because it's uh, thermomechanic equipment you cannot stop it you should it should have to be uh, just turn without any stoppage if it fails or plant stoppage then it stops and accordingly we are saying generally it's the hard of a cement plant Uh, rotary kiln and uh, we just adapted uh, some uh, to the related people if, if it stopped in any of plants uh, email notification gone to the people related people and also related people in the central office uh, they warned about the stop which another thing and some uh, data is also come to them about related uh, The related issue when it stopped. Uh, it, the, we are using notification currently for that one. We are planning to just uh, extend it on plant basis, especially. There are some specific unit chiefs like that cement mills chief can get warning about uh, notification from cement mills stop, which or other thing. Uh, we are planning to also just increase the amount of that issue, but we we just currently use for uh, kilns, rotary kilns. So, is there anything now that's more consistent as a result of what you've done? Yeah, it's just uh, it's in these days. In last month, we had started. We have started that one. It just we try to just uh, collect data and to uh, just analyze uh, actual CO2 emissions, because uh, CO2 emission is it's a critical issue for cement industry uh, especially last year because seven percent of the total emission of the world is caused by cement industry and uh, there's also a uh, big pressure on industry to just decrease that amounts and we need to follow it uh, there are some many investments and projects are uh, just going on but we, we we have to follow it Uh, generally, the plants just uh, checking the amounts in monthly basis and uh, reported on to in, in a yearly basis. Uh, there are some also some CO2 tax markets in European Union, not available in Turkey, but we have to follow it uh, the amounts because it will come uh, in near future. And accordingly, we we try to collect our actual CO2 emissions. Uh, By the help of uh, pi system, it's a little bit complicated. At the end of the day, you could get a one value. It's just uh, some 700-800 kg per uh, per ton of clean air. It's a value you can see it. But in the on the background, it's a huge uh, huge uh, uh, calculations available. The, the our advantage is that we used AF uh, AF formation to in the analysis tool. We just add all that calculations inside of it. I can say that uh, maybe more than 50, 55 parameters used and some constants and other things just multiplied, divided and other things. At the end of the Pi vision, you can see a one value, but in the, at the background, there is a huge calculation on it. And now, uh, just uh, last month, we, we have started to get the data. Now we are following it and we added some environmental guys to our team also uh, because the, it's a specific issue. Now they are using also Pi system to just follow that data, its accuracy and uh, with, with the data from the emission devices on the, uh, on the, on the, on the plants. And now we could follow it, how, how is happening in which plant and what is the group average, uh, all group plants average. It also helps so much and I believe uh, it will it will help us in near future about that issues. So it's a very important calculation in your industry. What were you doing before? What, what were you doing before you started using uh, your current uh, your current calculations for CO2? Was it different at different sites? Can you describe that? Yeah, there are some regulations and methodologies available. If you are not able to just uh, collect that data, there are some assumptions. Uh, for Turkey, uh, just uh, it's there is not a tax or uh, as you know that it's there is a market in uh, European Union. Uh, we are also in, inside that market in Portugal as Portugal. You can if you just save some carbon dioxide, you can sell it. On these days, it's one ton of carbon dioxide. It's uh, 30 euro uh, in the market. Uh, uh, just it's also uh, important for cement producers. They try to decrease it, uh, and in each time the benchmark getting lower. And by the help of that de decreasing, that relates about money. 
and uh, just uh, and by the help of saved carbon dioxide you can gain money it's also affects on costs and also on the other side the main aim is to decrease the co2 emissions to all over the world mm-hmm. in turkey it will happen in near future be, 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 because of that it's just there are some parameters available at the end of year basically it can be calculated but you you are missing some uh, details on it because these are assumptions now Uh, after we will be sure about that, we can use exactly that data. We can present it to the authorities and we could get the approval on it. It can be happen. But on the one side, uh, the, the main advantage, uh, now we can online uh, and uh, just actually we can monitor and see that what was happening on the field. What are the effects? We could analyze how could we decrease that CO2, which which fuels which process conditions uh, what effects happens on it 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 was it was hidden before because we couldn't see it uh, long term just calculations can be seen now actually we can see it we have trends we have all that data i believe it will help us so much we can detect the advantage drawbacks and other thing much more easily we could do quick actions uh, we could see the effects Birken, uh, you talked earlier about uh, one of the other ch- main challenges that you're facing uh, with energy costs. And, and you said that now uh, operators have access to energy KPIs. Um, what is it that they're actually changing in terms of operations with this information now available? Yeah, uh, yeah, Martin, it just uh, relate previously. Uh, it just people can see from SCADA system only how much they consume electricity, what they're producing. But now we have the advantage that we know the cost of that electricity from we can get it from uh, API connection from from web based web API from we could get the cost directly from there from web. And we could we can just combine it with existing uh, production and energy data and operate. We just place the monitor in the uh, central control room. Now the operator can see that how much he consuming and how but what is uh, what what is the uh, how much he consumes and what is the effect on the cost. Uh, it's a parametric basis. But the advantage is that he he just uh, exactly can see that it's it it happens good or bad and it just it's also has a psychological effect. It, it's right to just get it much more efficient to produce less cost uh, to keep the capacity high. It affects uh, on people. They can see uh, what what's happening now. So you say psychological. It's the competition, right? You have different shifts and different units competing. Yeah, it creates also a competition. Both compete by uh, himself and also the others, uh, because each shift, just uh, as I said, it's uh, the plant operates on all day, and when when they they they, they started to talk with each other, it just oh okay okay so not just against each other, but it's just competition to do better, just personally to do to do the better job. Now, that's fascinating because I know it's the same thing when. Um, in facilities, a lot of times, uh, folks who make the the cost of running facilities visible to the occupants. It's amazing what people do just now that they're actually tracking what the uh, what the actual costs are. Yeah. Now, now you're doing some kind of tracking of events, right? Uh, can you describe what kind of event tracking you're doing? Yeah, uh, just uh, event tracking. Mainly, we just try to catch the failures. Uh, what's what's happening? It just we we try to catch the stoppages uh, of main equipments, and uh, we added some conditions in it, and uh, we try to record it by the help of event frame, as I told you, and uh, by the help of that data also we we are just. Uh, calculating and uh, just getting the the critical figures for us key performance indicators like mtbf mtbr mean time between failure and mean time between repairs these are critical parameters to understand what's happening how much the failure happens how uh, what's the frequency of failures on the other side how long does it take that's just uh, the repairs and other thing the both uh, maintenance efficiencies uh, can be just uh, statistically analyzed by that data It was not so easy previously. It just calculated manually with some Excel sheets and other thing, but uh, now it's it's just m- much more automated, and also uh, it becomes a figure. You can just see it in unit basis. Uh, if you want, we can adapt it also in some equipment basis. Now we are looking on just unit basis, and we can follow it. Okay, and this is all. You was it difficult to actually configure? Um... The, the algorithm to detect when you had some type of a failure. I mean, this, or, yeah, was, can you describe that? 
Yeah, yeah, it's it's it, that's also the main advantage with event frame because it's many conditions you can put in it. Uh, it's some units uh, doesn't mean that only the feeding it stopped, like rotary kiln. If just yes, feeding may be stopped, but uh, the burner just can be still uh, going on or drive is still just uh, uh, just consuming some energy. You cannot detect it only with one equipment. There need to be some conditions, and it specifically changes in each equipment, in each unit. Event frame helps us so much. We define some uh, parameters on it. We, we, we define the conditions, uh, just m multiple conditions also. And it helps us to detect, is, is it really stopped or not? And uh, just uh, it, it also helps us so much because previously in the SCADA system, we only say that, okay, the main drive is uh, just is higher than zero. Just only one thing, you, you accept it as a stoppage. It's it sometimes it was not like that. Now uh, with the help of event frame conditioning, uh, we can define it accurately. Uh, okay. I can say. In the kiln stoppage, that's the, that's what you you were saying earlier. You put notifications on those. Is that correct? This sends emails out. How how's that worked out? Has that been? I mean, maybe you've already answered this question, but has the notifications improved uh, improved operations? Yep. Uh, Previously, it's just we we just some calls or uh, just people calling each other to just inform them. Uh, like it, it may happen in the night or it may happen in weekend or other thing. But kin stoppage is a critical issue, and uh, people just calling each other and inform the others and other thing. But I uh, but and also in the central office uh, we couldn't get. It takes some time. We we didn't be. It's it's something it uh, it missed because it's just the business. Uh, of that the busy the situation in the, on the field, but uh, by the help of that email ot ot notification, it's automatically we could get it, and we know that it stopped, and we we just get into the Pi Vision and check it why it stopped, what was happened before stoppage. We just mm -hmm. check the trends and other data. Uh, it helps everyone, all, all the plant people and also central office. Okay, and if I can, just in general, has there been is there any return on investment of all this effort, you know, from years? Is there anything you can describe where you're getting uh, genuine improvements? Yeah, uh, it's it's not easy to define it in cost basis exactly. Uh, just what because uh, I I I can say that it has an effect uh, directly on uh, the manufacturing cost, efficiency, and other thing. But at the meantime, uh, that that uh, that also uh, helps us to see the uh, improvement areas and the efficiencies, drawbacks, and at the meantime, we are also spending money, new investments, over of them. And uh, also that project has partially affect over of them. Yes, energy. When we check the last year's KPIs, the main KPIs, always there is a sustainable decreasing in, on the positive side and uh, just sustainably uh, the effect on, on energy consumption and other thing. It just in each year one step down we can go it. Uh, it shows us uh, we are going we, we are going on the. Uh, true way and just we could see everything and i could say that there is a huge amount of uh, effect uh, because of that project and it, it, because of that gains we have it's not easy to define it but i can say that yeah it's uh, we we can follow it from our kpis technical kpis and other thing it's improved clearly not only a single plant in, in the whole plants uh, it's clear to just uh, uh, increasing trend on efficiency and the performance yeah, that's clearly a great success. And 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 what is it that you would recommend to others uh, to start with as a first step, for example, in that journey? Yeah, uh, just uh, it's the, the the definition is also good. The people saying that, especially the machine learning uh, people, just on that in, in, in interesting that issues, they're saying that data is the fuel of that uh, issue. And uh, in in that part, it's uh, I think it, that's right. Uh, if you could not collect in proper way your data, like in cement industry. It's there's a huge amount of data available, but generally people only focusing on five percent of them. I can say it. Then doing all operations over of them. There is also an available ninety-five percent data is available. If you just only collect, store it, uh, just uh, it may help us within a, within a few years. If if someone decide to use it, uh, it helps us so much. The most critical part is just. You should. Uh, everyone need to just uh, if if start 
we just start to collect that data in a proper way. Uh, I can say it. The other thing, it's the solution and your your collection connectability. And the other thing must be a universal solution. It's that that's critical. Uh, in our experience, we have several uh, brands of PLCs versions uh, because some plants are old, some of them are new. It's 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 really hard to uh, just manually just uh, piece by piece collection is not easy. It's just uh, connectivity. Uh, it, it's it's crucial. If you just uh, just design it like that, it's not so hard because uh, I didn't say it. Maybe just we it it, it takes an hundred and ten days to adapt it on ten cement plants with an internal team. We we got only the consultancy from Otisoft from far away. We asked some questions, we got replies, but we do it with ourselves. And the people did it, uh, just uh, they didn't know anything about Otisoft. They they just heard the name of Otisoft and start to use it. It takes only three months. Uh, just uh, if you have data, if you have just, just motivation on it, uh, you can use it and you can do it easily. Right. Well, that's um, that's always nice to hear because that's, of course, uh, our founder and the CEO, Pat Kennedy, has always thought that the um, just getting the right tools into the hands of people who know the process, uh, it's just amazing what folks can do. And as you said, you, you were able to do just the vast majority of this yourself. You, you didn't think that going into this project. Is that correct? You thought that the, a lot of this was were things you were going to have to have third parties do is that correct or can you describe that yeah just uh, it's the, uh, i i i thought and i still believe like that it's a specific issue each industry each is different and uh, just uh, uh, the, that's an issue is not a standard conventional it data collection or other thing because you need to select that data you need to do adaptation according to your conditions because of that it's just exact operational people have to use it it's, uh, if, if you want to success on it uh, because it's it's not a data collection is not a new thing as i said scada dcs systems is available but the problem is that uh, that some specific people you they are just doing that job but they are not using that data or they don't know what was happening what what will happen in the next stage with that data the the, the main advantage is that it's uh, by using the platform uh, the, the the people, exact users and uh, the owners, they, they can define the gains and they can uh, just put something over of it. That's the reason uh, we selected especially a platform, uh, user-friendly and easily accessible platform. And uh, by that way, uh, by, by, by that idea, we, we had started with only a, a Osisoft partner in Turkey. We just looked and we just won the only one uh, person just uh, the reason is that we selected only one person to uh, sit with us and uh, just do the connection discussions with OSISoft because it was so new. We didn't know OSISoft and uh, we, we used that partner to do that communications and to do that adaptations. And the, all the other job, I can say that it's more than 90% of job it's done by ourselves. We didn't get uh, any support. Uh, specific support on it. Also, we had to ask some questions if some uh, connectivity problems may happen. We just asked to, to do that party, asked to OSISoft get the answer. But all the job, we just split the team uh, on the field. Our people, our uh, own people did it. That's great to hear. It's really good to hear. Well, that's the end of uh, that's the end of everything we really wanted to talk about about the project. Is there anything I forgot to ask you? Anything that you wanted to tell us about the project that I just didn't get to? Yep. Thank you very much. It's just uh, it's it's a journey. We defined it as a uh, four phase project, but uh, it goes uh, to further ways. It just now we are just roughly I can say it now we are looking for mixed reality options to just put uh, just integrate with OSISoft while people just traveling in the plant they can see exactly what was happening, uh, it, like a mixed reality Pi Vision adaptation. Uh, just additional uh, always it comes with new ideas from people and uh, to us and uh, just it's also interesting it will not finish it will go on that's nice uh, we are happy with that existing situation and uh, just we are happy with that promising issues like that uh, thank you very much also for that uh, conversation oh thanks so much thanks very much for joining us hey we, I wanted to ask you a quick lightning round of questions that are unique to, uh, to operations 
So um, you're 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 on the road right now, right? You're visiting another plant, but are you actually? I guess you're going into the plant, right? Uh, during the pandemic, are you going into the office? Are you working from home? What's it been like? Yeah, we 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 have to we have to we visit some some plants like that. It just uh, we are visiting. Okay, so right now you're in Portugal, is that right? Okay, and then but uh, obviously you're going to be going to the plant. You wouldn't be going to Portugal if you're not going into the plant, right? I'm just asking about the pandemic, really. What's been going on for you uh, during the pandemic, whether you're staying at home or whether you're going into the uh, physical location? Yeah, it, it, it was not like before. We, we, we try to visit plants, but so limited uh, sure. because, yes, we can get all the data by the help of OSISOF, but you should have to just need to some face-to-face -face contacts to just to people. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a little bit limited, but we try to visit also uh, partially the okay. plants also. You've been working with uh, data um, much of your career. What's the most interesting calculation you think you've ever done or, or if you've written code? Uh, I'm not a coding guy. I'm just a mining engineer and cement engineering on, on, on just uh, my, my profession. But uh, just uh, when I think about it, uh, that that last time, it's just as I told you, it's that CO2 calculations and some specific uh, data calculations, I, I, I did like specific heat, specific electrical energy. Uh, these are interesting, not complicated like the others, but uh, they touch directly to the operations. Uh, I can say it like that. I, I just okay. uh, just like okay. And and so you're an engineer. So do you have a piece of broken equipment? Um, you know, like something from an incident that you keep as a souvenir on your desk. <laughs> yeah, it's not easy to put on my put on my desk. Yeah, we have some old equipments, but it, these are huge equipments. Uh, uh, but some some parts of equipments, yes. When I just think about it, there are some steel balls. Uh, I like to just playing with them. Cement grinding in ball mills, we have some steel balls, just shiny steel balls. Some it's also uh, getting your stress to just playing with them. I can say it. <laughs> okay. And now I noticed on your website there were some projects that were described. I, I couldn't understand why why you were you had on your website pictures of stadiums, and um, and highways. I guess it's because they're made out of cement. Is that why those are on your website? Yeah, that's right. And also uh, we have uh, the concrete company and also just a uh, construction company. Uh, okay. OYAK is a big structure. OYAK okay. is a big industrial structure. And we uh, we just uh, just giving projects, not only cement, also concrete and design phases on, on the bridge. Like, and I say that third uh, bridge on the Bosporus and at the stadium of a football team, we just give that concrete and we attended that projects. Okay, and so so what's the what's the largest project that your cement's ever gone into? Do you know? Uh, I I can say that it's one of them. It's the the Marmaray project. I can say it just uh, under the Bosporus. There's a tunnel to just uh, connecting both European side and Asian side in Istanbul. We give the concrete of for that project. It's a it's one of them as I remember. Mm -hmm. Uh. And also highway projects, it's consuming so much, but also spe specific uh, construction projects uh, uh, just also available. But okay. these are, I can say it. Okay. So when you are on, um, on site, um, I'm just curious, what's the, what's the most common animal that wanders onto your facility at that site? Because it seems like every operations area has got some animal that just causes a lot of trouble. Uh, yeah, it's just I can say it's uh, in some regions, uh, some uh, some pigs may cause some problems, but mice. It's I can say it mice the problems <laughs> because they are just uh, problems with that cables. It's just sometimes they just. Uh, they just create big problems. It's just uh, on the channels and other thing. Uh, they, they, some plants may stop 
uh, due to their if they found the correct cable they can stop the plant i'm not <laughs> it can be a data cable <laughs> i'm not talking about big energy cables right, uh, right. i can say it oh well, that's fascinating okay cool well thank you so much for uh, for being with us today we've been talking to uh Berkin Fieden, uh again performance and process director at oyak cement thank you so much Berkin. thank you thank you nick it was a pleasure for me also and 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 so, yeah, thank you, Martin. We've been talking to Martin Provencher. He's the industry principal for mining metals at OSI Soft. Again, thank you both for joining us. Thanks. Thanks again. Thank you. Right. And thank you all. We'll see you in uh, two more weeks. Bye-bye.